Hello, this video will show you how to import data into your spending tracker so you can get on top of where all the money is going. So in this example, we are saying that you have data from three different places, Halifax, Monzo and American Express. So what you're going to want to do is, because you're spending on those three different places, is pull the data in from each of those different banks. So. We're assuming that you've already done the download from those banks themselves. So you'd go into Monzo and download your statement and your data. You'd go into Halifax, you'd go to American Express. And we just wanted to show you how it works to pull the data in from those spreadsheets you've downloaded into the spending tracker itself. Two things to note. One, if you want a copy of the spending tracker so you can do this along with us, it's in the link below, you can download that. And number two, each and every bank provides you with different information, which is really annoying, um, but we're going to work that out. So they might give you an Excel spreadsheet, they might give you a CSV file, but we're going to show you how we do that. And when you download the data from these different banks, it might give you different file options. You're always going to want to go for the CSV version. Comma separated values. It's just plainer and easier. You will notice that when you first open the template, there is some blank data here. Tasty food, flowers for rebels. Who bought flowers for rebels? I don't know. And chorizo lounge. What is even that? I quite fancy going. Um, but there is blank data. And we're going to leave that in there for now uh, because there's some formula amongst those that we just want to make sure copies down when we copy our new data in. So if we'll copy in the data, then we'll delete that afterwards. Exactly. We're going to show you that. Yeah. And just to say as well, if spreadsheets are overwhelming you, if you're like, how do you insert things? How do you delete things? I made a Excel for beginners course that starts completely from the beginning. And we'll put a link to that in the description of this video. So we are now going to go to the Halifax banking data that I downloaded from my Halifax account. Uh, so I'm revealing to you my spending. <gasps> so the thing to notice here is you're looking and you're going, hang on, it says date, but it's all these like hash values, what's going on there? And all it means is that those columns are not big enough for those to fit in. So all you need to do is make the column a bit bigger. So you do that, you can just use this little cursor here and make it bigger. Another pro tip, what you can do to make all of the columns auto fit is select the ones you want and then just double click here and it does it for you. So. The three columns, the only three columns we care about that we want to copy into our tracker template is the date, the description, and the amount. Now, we've actually got two dates here, Alan. What's that about? So, date one is the date we made the transaction, and date two entered is the date that it turned up on our credit card. So, Katie and I always prefer the actual date we spent the money, so we're going to pick the first column. So... All I'm going to do is select the data that we want to copy over. I do control C on my keyboard and then we go to the spending tracker and I'm going to paste it in here as values. The reason I do that is so that the receiving spreadsheet sort of knows what format I want them in and it pastes it in the right way. And you'll notice as well that these orange lines appeared and that the table automatically extended, which is very cool. Well done, Excel. You are doing what you want, what I want <laughs> you to do. So then let's go back to the description and the amount. And since these two columns are next to each other, I'm just going to copy them over in one go because they're next to each other. It's just really easy then to copy it over into the other sheet. So I'm going to do Control C and then again, I'm going to do paste values. Don't worry if you're paste value seems a bit much for you, you can just paste it in um, as the without doing that. It just looks nicer when it, it comes does. through and it keeps all the formatting the same. Uh, and you'll notice like what we've got come through is supermarket, £24. Cinemark, yes, we went to see Furiosa, that was £12.83 for two of us, which we love Colombian prices. Um, so we've got these things and then we want to actually categorise them. So one way to do it is to click this little arrow next to it. And for us, supermarket is groceries. So that's our groceries. Cinemark, definitely entertainment because, yeah, it was just fun. Uh, Foga, Fogata. That's eating out. Was a restaurant eating out. As are the next two. And one little tip here is you don't necessarily have to do this drop down all the time. You can start typing and it will appear what you want there. Or you can do sort of copy and paste as well because these three are all the same ones. 
uh, and then we have entertainment for cinema again. And what's this, Alan? We've got a minus thing here for Airbnb. So it's interesting. The way the data comes in from this spreadsheet is plus for spending and minus for reimbursements. So Airbnb were not very good. Um, so they gave us a small reimbursement on our last Airbnb from Bogota, and that has come back onto our credit card. So we will actually leave it as a minus so that it shows up as we've got money back in from Airbnb. It's like an income in a way. Yeah, so it's the housing, so it's going to show that our overall housing for the month was lower because of that refund. Exactly. And this account thing on the end here, that's completely optional, but we're going to just populate it and put Halifax because just so that we know where the spending came from if we ever want to look back. Exactly, then we can check on which card it came from and the data details if we want to. So now we've put those first Halifax bits in, are we safe to delete the dummy lines, we Katie? We are, Alan, that is a good shout. So what I'm going to do is just select these three, these were the dummy data, just do right click, delete, and, and it's gone. ready to pull in the data from the next bank transactions. We've done the first one. Woo! Okay, let's show you a couple of others because the data always comes in different formats. So let's look at Monzo now and have a look at Monzo. So this is how the data turns up from Monzo. You'll notice again you've got the hashes because the column isn't quite wide enough. But we are only really interested in three columns, which is date, description and amount. That's kind of what we're interested in here. So let's do the same again then. This is the date that the transactions were for. I'm just going to copy those and go back to the spending tracker and paste them in here. And I'm just going to do as values because it helps the spreadsheet to have what it's expecting. Then we go back and we go for description. description now, which is description? probably name over there. I think this is the type of payment. This That's is the, the type. Payment. I mean name next to it. Oh, name. I see. Sorry. I chose That's the wrong okay. one. I got very excited, Alan. That's so okay. let's copy these in and then we go back over here and we just go and paste values again. Okay, we've got those. We need the amounts. Let's go for amount and this is interesting. We have amount, we have local amount, we have money out and we have money in. Which one should we take, Alan? Well, I think because all of our spending is Great British Pounds, then we can just pick either local amount or amount. When this gets confusing is when you like spend money when you're on holiday. So the amount would say, if you went to Mexico, it would say X Mexican pesos, but then it would give you the local amount as well, which is super easy. Well done, Monzo. Um, well done, Monzo. So we love you. So for now, it doesn't matter. So let's take these ones. So exactly. We'll copy that. And, and there's something we'll notice about these ooh. figures very quickly as well. Yeah, they're mostly negative. They're negative. So does that mean we'd be refunded by little roundups, Costa Coffee? <laughs> is everyone paying us? I wish, Alan. What happens is that some banks present this differently. So Halifax had spending as a positive number. Monzo has spending as a negative mon mon number, which kind of makes sense. I, it's, it's come out of your account. It's, it's minus from your account. Exactly. So what we're going to do, there's a few different ways of dealing with this. One sort of the, the uh, beginner level way of doing this is I've just gone into the cell and I'm going to delete the minus sign. Just before you do that, we have got Jane Alfred at plus 50. So what happens here, this is that this person has, or in our fictitious data, they've moved money from one account to the other. So this isn't spending, this is just I've moved it from one account to the other. So what I'm going to do is just right click on here and press delete and that's gone because we're not interested in that. No. transaction because we're only interested here in our spending which is Just also the same for roundup pots exactly that's saving as well so that's not actually spending again that's kind of just moving money from one place to the other so let's delete that one and actually you could have done this back in the monzo data download you could have done it there it doesn't really matter whether you do it here or in the tracker template just choose which one you prefer so i'm just going to delete these what was the advanced level methodology? The advanced level is what you could do is you could, um, one way of doing it is you can do a, a formula. So you could say equals this times minus one. And it's actually added a whole column there. I didn't actually want to do that. No. It's a bit advanced. So I'm going to undo that and just press control Z to undo that. We're just going to delete the minus. Yeah, let's delete now. the minus. I did put uh, some instructions in the start here tab as to how to deal with those negative numbers. It just escaped me off the top of my head what to do there. So please go to the start here tab to look at that. 
and then you would go through and categorize them all and add the account. Um, so we're not going to bore you with doing all of that right now, but you can see that's Katie doing it. We are going to mark that it comes from Monzo so that we know what we have spent on the different accounts, which makes it super easy. And then we've got one more example to show you, which is American Express. Now, American Express gives you options of how to download it. This is the comma separated values, the CSV file that you can see here. It also gave you a spreadsheet, um, which the spreadsheet comes through looking like this. This so you is get like an Excel got spreadsheet. formatting and colours and things, um, but it's exactly the same information, isn't it? Yeah. It's just, if anything, this is a bit more confusing because it has loads of all these different other tabs as well and it's pretending to try and give you category, which I don't think that we should look at that. Well, they've called they it travel agents yeah. and different <laughs> things. It's their categories. It doesn't really help us. So we actually don't think the Excel version adds any real value. So let's go back to this data one. And again, what seems to happen is the date doesn't quite fit in these cells. So you always, whenever you see these hash values, it just means I'm not big enough. Let me see what's going on. So again, remember, all we care about here is the date, the description and the amount. One thing to notice here, I'm just double click to make the cell big enough to read. This says payment received, thank you. So that's Alan like paying the money off on his card. So that's not spending, that's just him paying the card off. So I'm just gonna delete that from here so that then we can just pull in the ones that are your actual spending. Exactly. And you'll see that um, American Express presents these as positive numbers, which is really useful for us because that's what we want in the tracker template. So again, I'm just going to copy these. And actually, I could copy both of those at the same time because in our template, we've got date and description next to each other. So I'm going to copy these in here. And as I paste these in as values, look, look what happens to the table. It automatically extends. You can see that because it's got this orange lines around it and it's got this little corner here, which shows that it's being included, which is awesome. So then let's just pull in the amount. And I think we're pretty much done. And we're going to categorise that later on so you don't have to watch us categorising <laughs> our Airbnb watch spending us do our admin. and calling the account. But this is a little bit of a manual process. However, it allows you to bring in data from American Express and Monzo and Barclays or whoever you're using for your different accounts, aggregate it all and then examine it. Ooh. So check out the other video that we've done that... Are you still looking at me? I was excited. <laughs> check out the other video that we've done which shows you how to use the template as well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can get the template you've been looking at in the links below. And if you want more about tracking your spending, watch week one of Rebel Finance School. Link in the description. <laughs>